Pastor. Well, God threw me a curve during worship, and so I had a message prepared, and I'm going a different direction, all right? So go with me to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. I'm not going to use that picture I sent you guys. Sorry about that. Um, But one thing that you saw in the video that is just a huge part of what we do, what we believe, is healing. Uh, I've experienced healing myself uh, so many different times. Uh, Physical healing. I had had nine back surgeries about 12 years ago. I was supposed to be on pain meds the rest of my life. Uh, And about a year after those surgeries, during a worship time at a church in Colorado, God just healed my back. Uh, And so I've been pain-free, you know, off of meds. I've actually, they told me I could never run, do that stuff. I've done a couple half marathons very slowly, but I did them. Um, anyways, so God heals, but I also believe in, in healing of our heart and our mind, our emotions. And so I want to share with you about that. Uh, go with me to Mark 5, 21. It says, when Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. And then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus Everyone say Jairus. You know why speakers have you repeat words? Just to make sure you're awake. That's right. It's a fun little thing to do. Okay, so a guy named Jairus. It's interesting because Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the story that this is in, um, all of them know this guy's name. So he was a well-known person. He's a leader, a religious leader. He came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. This is a pretty amazing thing that's happening. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter... And in Greek, that's thigatrion. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it's thigatrion. It means my beloved little daughter. My beloved little daughter is sick and she's dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. And live. So Jesus went with him. So Jesus is busy. He's with an important guy in the community. Everyone knows who this guy is. Can you imagine, you know, the mayor of Auburn? I don't know who that is, but comes into church and falls on their face right here at the altar and says, please pray for me. I mean, we'd all be like, wow, this is awesome. Uh, So this guy's a leader asking Jesus for help. Jesus is on his way to do a miracle. It says a large crowd followed and pressed around him. And then in verse 25, it says, and a woman was there. Now, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they knew who Jairus was. None of them knew who this woman was. We don't even know her name. A woman was there. And it describes her situation, says that she'd been subject to bleeding for 12 years. How many of you, your favorite book in the Bible is Leviticus? Anybody, all right? No, (laughs) Leviticus is a tough book. And so I doubt this is anyone's favorite verse, but uh, Leviticus 15.25 says that when a woman has this flow of blood, that she is actually unclean. She's unclean. She's ceremonially unclean. That's a big deal in this society. So she could not participate in the you know, synagogue life. She couldn't go into certain places in the temple. She basically lived a very isolated life. Actually, The Chosen, if you guys watched that, they just had an episode on this. It was really good. Uh, so if you don't like this preaching, just watch the episode. So she's there, and it wasn't 12 days. It wasn't 12 weeks or 12 months. It was 12 years. I have a 13-year-old. Can you imagine most of his life? This woman uh, it also says in Leviticus that The life of the animal or the person is in the blood. Uh, And so she's literally losing life every day for over a decade. It says that she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. So she's not only sick, uh, she's also impure, ceremonially impure, and then she also is dirt poor. Uh, If she was married, we don't know anything about that. If she was, most likely her husband would have left her because he couldn't, by just being around her, he himself is also impure. How many of your favorite book of the Bible is Numbers? Anybody else? Okay. Numbers 19.22. You don't see this verse on many bumper stickers, but it says, whenever an impure person touches something else, that becomes impure. So she's a contagious, impure person. So can you imagine over a decade living like this? Uh, I'm sure she lived a completely isolated life. In fact, when you were in this state, when you went out, because anyone that you would touch would become impure, she had to announce it. She had to say, all right, I'm impure. And everyone would grab their kids and go to the side. And I mean, she was like a freak of nature. And she would go down and live completely alone. She probably hadn't felt someone's embrace in, again, over a decade. 
Imagine what that does to you psychologically, emotionally. And so it says that when she heard about Jesus, uh, we know from Romans that faith comes by what? By hearing. She hears about Jesus. You don't know from who. She hears the rumors. Hey, there's this, there's this guy. Some believe he's the Messiah. He's healing people. He's casting out demons. It's amazing. So she hears about him, reads about him on Twitter, maybe. I don't know. Probably not. Uh, and so it, she decides to do something. It says that she came up behind him in the crowd. Now, I don't know if she wore like a disguise. She may have had to because, again, what she's doing, I'm sure she's touching people because it says there's a multitude around him. I grew up in Mexico City, and uh, I would have sometimes the privilege of going on the subway during rush hour, and there's nothing like it. It's incredible. I mean, the, the doors open to the subway car, and it's full of people, and on the platform, it's full of people, and what you do is you just push and you shove, and you get to know people really well, all right? And you're there, and I, I mean, what's funny, I always laugh, because in there, in that state, you have people like right here, and no one looks at each other. And so I remember growing up, my friend and I would dare, we'd dare each other just to stare at someone to make them uncomfortable. But anyways, that's what I'm imagining. I mean, there's a crowd of people pressing on Jesus, and she's pushing and shoving. I'm sure she's touching people. The minute they discover what she's done, she's in huge trouble. Jesus is with the synagogue ruler, and, at, at, and I'm sure, uh, actually, Christian, is it Christian? I'm going to have you help me out here and be an actor for me. Since you just got ordained, you're going to play the part of Jesus, all right? Yes, yes, very holy. So I, I want you to look that way. Yes, thank you. You got to grow a beard really quick, all right? So Jesus, again, he's going this way. He's going to do a miracle. He's got Jairus next to him, and there's people all around. I'll be the woman, Okay. And I'm imagining, she, it says that she came up behind him and she touched the hem of his garment. Now, again, back then they would wear like a one-piece garment that would go all the way to the ankles. And so she's coming back and, and she literally is just touching right here, squeezing her way in. Thank you for that performance. All right. All right. That was amazing. Again, it never even says that she sees the face of Jesus. She comes up from behind. Let's read it again. When she heard about Jesus, verse 27, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Now, what happens? Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Now, again, really quick, whoever she touches becomes impure. Her impurity is contagious. But that's different with Jesus because it says he carried our suffering. He took our infirmities upon him. So what happens to her infirmity? It's placed on Jesus. He takes that, but then instead of her, you know, contagiando a ella, I can't think of that in English, getting him sick, okay? Instead of, <laughs> he takes that and then his power and his healing is imparted to her. And so that's the awesome exchange of Jesus. We give him our garbage. We give him our infirmities, our sin, our shame, as Pastor Garen was sharing, our guilt. He takes that and gives us righteousness, peace, and joy. And so she feels immediately there's, there's a healing. Woo! I mean, this is awesome. This is amazing. What's incredible is we could end the story right there. I mean, that's an awesome story. And so what does she do? I mean, she's like, she's got her healing. She broke a couple ceremonial laws to get it, okay? And so she wants to get out of there quick. And so she's leaving. Now look at what Jesus does. I move around a lot. I got away from the Bible. Here we go. Verse 30. It says, at once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. And so he turned around in the crowd and he asked, who touched my clothes? And I love this because uh, some people say I have the gift of sarcasm. And I see sarcasm right here in the Bible, verse 31. You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? I, mean, I, mean, I don't think you should be sarcastic with Jesus. But anyways, that's what they say. They're like, are you kidding me? Like, everyone's pressing against you. And he's like, no, no, someone touched me. Now, I'm imagining, I mean, she's already trying to leave. She's trying to go incognito back home. She got her miracle. Wonderful. She, again, she can get in a lot of trouble for what she did because she broke several ceremonial laws. Jairus, the big wig, you know, synagogue ruler, is standing right there. She interrupted that trip. 
And so she's, she's in danger. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. So finally she realizes she's not going to get away with it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. Why was she trembling with fear? Because of what she had done. I mean, she, there are certain scholars believe she could have possibly been stoned to death for what she did because she's spreading impurity to everybody. You know, she's a social outcast and what she did was against the ceremonial laws, and technically, well, she made Jesus impure. You know, she made the prophet impure. So why on earth is Jesus doing this? Why not just let her go home? I mean, how many of you think Jesus knew who touched him? I do. So why is he embarrassing her? Why is he putting her life in danger? He's like, nope, we're not moving. We're not going. And Jairus is like, come on, like my daughter's sick. Let's go. I mean, we know from the story that when they get there, she, she had already died. So this is an urgent situation. He's like, nope, we're not moving on. Who did it? Who did it? And so finally she comes forward. So Christian, I'm going to use your acting skills again. All right, that's what happens when you get ordained, man. <laughs> so now, again, Jesus turns around. So now Jesus is looking this way. The woman's, who knows, way over here. He's like, I'm not moving on. So finally she realizes I can't, I can't get away. So she comes, and now she comes before him and actually in Matthew, I like in Matthew because it kind of gives the slow motion. It says that Jesus looked at her and said, okay, but in Mark it says she comes before him, falls at his feet, trembling with fear, and admits. This is the first time in the story that she's seeing Jesus face to face. Okay, applause for Christian, okay? That was a very hard acting job. And she admits everything. She tells him the whole truth. Well, it's because I heard on Facebook that... You heal people, and, and I heard the stories, and I've had this condition. I need you. I need help. And so I came up, and I touched you. Okay? And he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. That's it. Why did Jesus do that? What is he doing? I, I want to submit to you that the key is in one word, why Jesus did this. Again, she comes up behind Jesus. She doesn't see his face that we even know of. She certainly doesn't talk to him, and he doesn't talk to her. He, she experiences a level of healing, and that's, that's where many of us are at. God, just give me a miracle. I need this miracle provision in my life. That is good. That is wonderful. I just told you I experienced healing in my body. But I want to submit to you that Jesus was completing the healing. The healing wasn't complete yet. Because he didn't want her slinking away and going home and saying, hey, I'm physically healed. But again, imagine the emotional, psychological damage of being an impure, poor outcast for 12 years. And so Jesus is like, uh-uh, I need to look you in the face. And so she comes and he looks at her and he says one word, and it's the word daughter. You can look it up. In all the Gospels, this is the only time in all the Gospels where Jesus says that directly to a person. He calls her daughter. He doesn't say, woman, you dirty, rotten scoundrel. He doesn't say that. He says, daughter. It's actually the same Greek word that Jairus used for his little daughter that was dying. My beloved daughter. What is he saying? He's looking at her and he's saying, you know, I healed you physically, but I need to, I need to complete the healing. I need to heal you psychologically. And I would submit to you that she went away that day, obviously freed from her physical suffering, but I think the number one thing in her mind was, I'm a beloved daughter. He knows me. He delights in me. I'm no longer the impure, poor, useless person. No, I'm a daughter of the king. I'm a daughter of the Messiah. That's what he was doing. And he says to her, daughter, your faith has made you well, now you can go in peace. Now you can go in peace. And many of us, we live with this half healing. You know, Jesus, you know, I, I'm not worthy of looking at you. And Pastor Garen talked about shame. And that's exactly what I was sensing during worship. We carry so often a shame. It's like, well, Lord, I, you know, I can't look you in the face. And so please, I know I'm an idiot. I know I mess up. I know I'm not worthy, but just give me a crumb. Give me something. And, and God will do that because he loves us but he also wants to look at us and say, I need to heal your identity. I need to heal your identity. 
Because you are not your past. You are not what other people say about you. You're not what you say about you. You are what God says about you. When I go to Spain, I have to have a certain thing. I can't just smile and say, hey, I want to go to Spain. They're going to ask me for something. Does anyone know what that is? Obviously a ticket, a plane ticket. But I have to have a certain document called a passport. Yes, I have to have a passport. And I actually, not that I've tried, don't misunderstand me, but I can't make my own passport, okay? I really can't get someone else to make my passport. I have to have the highest authority, the U.S. Department of State, issue me a passport. Whatever country you're from, that country is the one that issues you the passport. They are the one that says, yes, you are who you say you are. And I believe that Jesus was doing a passport check. He was saying, okay, give me your false ID because you're not unclean, dirty, poor. Give me that. I give you your, it's only the highest authority that gives us our identity. And so Jesus was saying, you are my daughter. I delight in you. You want to know how hard it is to be a daughter or a son? Not hard at all. (laughs) I got three boys. I say I have a daughter, but it's a dog. So it's not really my daughter. And so I have three sons. I, they didn't have to do a whole lot to be my sons. They literally just had to be born and be part of our family. This woman was receiving adoption, the spirit of adoption, that love of Jesus that says, you're not your past, you're who I say you are. You're who I say you are. I want to ask you to stand with me. Just a simple message, straightforward, but I really sense in my heart that there's healing that's, that God wants to do this morning. Now, I believe in physical healing, man. I want that. I, again, I'm not, don't misunderstand what I'm saying in this message. Uh, she needed physical healing in her body. She had been suffering for 12 years. God is a healer. I've seen God heal so many people. I mean, just incredible things. Uh, he's the same yesterday, today, forever. He can heal your body. Uh, as I said, he, he healed my back. Uh, but also... About 10 years ago, the Lord did this work in my life. I I was a believer, loved Jesus, but my identity was in what I did for God. And I was burning myself out. I was trying to achieve something so that God would love me. And God dealt with me in that, uh, began to speak to me that I'm a son, that I'm loved. I heard that my whole life, you know. Oh, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. But I had this just new revelation of the love of Jesus. I don't earn it. I don't try to win it. He he loves me. I mean, I'm I'm stuck. I'm being stalked by goodness and mercy. He's going to follow me all the days of my life. He loves me and delights in me. And some of you need that healing in your identity. Because you're carrying still that shame. Lord, just give me a crumb from your table and I'll leave you alone because I know you can't stand me. No, he delights in you. I want to ask you just to close your eyes so you're not distracted. And just be honest with where you're at. First, I mean, if you need healing in your body, we want to pray for you this morning. If you need healing, though, in your mind, in your heart, if the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you through this message, you say, man, that's, that's me. I've been carrying that identity, that false identity of what people have spoken over me, what I've even said maybe about myself, and I know it's not what God says. And God wants to declare over you who you really are. Maybe you've never, ever experienced that. I spent 18 years going to church almost every week, and I did not know Jesus. I didn't know him. I'd never experienced him. I'd never given my life to him. And so I don't take for granted that just because you're here, you actually know Jesus. Man, he, you, you will discover who you really are when you give your life to him. And so that's a broad invitation. And I would simply say it like this. If God is speaking to you and you know you want to respond to any of those things, you know you need to respond, I just want you to raise your hand right where you are. Say, man, this message is for me. Thank you. Thank you. All over. So here's what we're going to do. Like this woman, she heard and then she did something. She heard and then she stepped out. 
I want you to step out. And I'm, those of you that raised your hands right now, I want to invite you to come up. So you're going to have to open your eyes. Okay. Come on up. Come on up. And I want to pray over you because the same God that healed this woman is here. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can come over to this side. We got space over here. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's room over on this side, too. Hallelujah. Man, he's good. He's good. He's good. Thank you, Jesus. I, I want you to receive. Just put your hands out like this, like you're going to receive. Because God just wants to fill you. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to strive for it. He's here. He delights in blessing his kids. He loves you. So the first thing we're going to do, no matter what you came up here for, we're just going to get, we're going to pray a prayer giving our lives to Jesus. So we're going to say that out loud, all right? I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. I know I've sinned. I've fallen short. And that's why you died on the cross for me. Right now, I surrender to you. I give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Jesus, wash me in your blood. Cleanse me. Be my Lord, be my Savior, and be my very best friend. From this moment on, I live only for you. Thank you, Jesus. And now I want you to put your hands on your heart. Lord, I just pray right now for healing from every lie of the enemy. Every lie that's been spoken, maybe through a loved one, spoken throughout your life, lies that say that you are something that you're not. The only one who declares your identity is the one who created you, who formed you in your mother's womb. He knit you together. He knows everything about you. He knows you perfectly, and he loves you perfectly. And so, Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray healing right now, healing over emotions, healing over mindsets. Holy Spirit, you're the one who renews our mind. So right now, in Jesus' name, we cast to the ground every lie of the enemy that we have believed, that we have held on to, that we are unclean, that we are shameful, whatever it may be, whatever lie that is, we throw it down right now in Jesus' name. And I declare healing over you. And I declare what God says about you, that you are loved, that you are cherished. The Bible says that he sings over us. You are the apple of his eye. You are not a mistake. He created you on purpose for a purpose. You are not an accident. He loves you. I just see depression coming off of people right now in Jesus' name. There's been a heaviness and a depression over you. I attempted suicide two times when I was in high school. I know what depression feels like. And God delivered me in a kitchen. In a kitchen, he delivered me. And so right now, I rebuke that spirit of depression, that heaviness, that spirit of death goes right now. I declare life and abundant life over you. Jesus came that you would have life and life abundantly. Lord, I declare that over everyone right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, if there's anyone here that physically needs that touch in their body right now, touch them in Jesus' name. Touch them, Lord. Heal backs, Lord, just as you healed mine. I pray for backs to be healed. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for ears to be healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just receive his love right now. Receive his love right now from your head to your toes. Your whole being, your whole heart. I declare the love of Jesus over you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. It doesn't matter what someone else says, someone else thinks. It doesn't matter what you think. It's what he says. It's what he declares over you. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you so much that you are here. I thank you that you are moving right now. 
Thank you, Lord, that you've begun a work in us today that's going to continue in these next several days. Lord God, I thank you that you're making us new. I thank you, Lord, you're making us new. I thank you, Lord. Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, we just embrace the identity, child of God. That's the identity we embrace. I, I embrace the identity, child of God, child of God, child of God. If you have put your faith in Jesus, would you just say out loud, I am a child of God? Let's say it again. I am a child of God. Yes, Lord, we embrace that identity. Jesus, you are our identity. We find our identity in you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for making us new, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do a deep, 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 deep work, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're welcome to stay and pray, but I would love to just, just, uh, just say this over you. We believe that God has just done an identity work in you. So there's no mistake that you are here today. So could I just challenge you to think differently and look for the change? So many times we pray, we might even feel something at the altar, but then we just... I don't know, we just slip back into default. Let's just draw a line in the sand and say, no more default. I'm done with default. So when you experience a typical thought of shame, would you just recognize that and go, hey, wait a minute, no, no, that's not who I am. Because something happened to me in prayer at church today. So, like, let that be like a, almost like an alarm clock, a little alarm that going off in your phone. Like, wait a minute. No, that thought, that does not belong here. And instead, replace it with a biblical thought, like, I'm a child of God. Can I just be transparent with you? I've been talking to God about this in my own life. And yesterday, I just had to write myself a note in my phone. No. I am loved by God, period. I am worthy of love. I know because Jesus gave me his love. And so I'm starting to have to think differently, embrace a different identity, the identity from the Lord. If God has been doing a work in your heart in this area, I want to challenge you. Like, I, I don't know how... Ryan did this, except for the, I know this was not his plan, and the Holy Spirit led this. We are in an identity series in our groups. And we are, we are saying, I'm not going to live a lie anymore. I want to encourage you. That I have no, I don't get a kickback <laughs> or a royalty from you coming to groups. I want you in groups because you will get blessed. And we're going to reinforce the work done here today. We're going to reinforce it and say no more lies. Mm -mm. I'm not going to live a lie anymore. A lie like I'm unworthy. I'm, a, I'm a, a, an idiot. I'm, a, I'm worthless. No, we're not, no, we're not living that lie anymore. That's from the devil. We're going to start thinking a new way. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So there's, there's no rush. I know I've kind of broken the mood. Your eyes are open. You're looking at me. If you would like to pray a little longer, we'll just keep the music going. Stay as long as you want. Otherwise, if you're, if you're ready to go, I do encourage you to pick up a prayer card in the back for our missionary so that you could actually pray for him and his family by name. If you have a connect card, would you drop it in the offering box? Because we do want to connect, definitely. And then once everyone's done praying, we'll do a little practical setup for groups if you want to help with that. No hurry there, okay? Soft close. You can keep praying if you want. You can go if you want. God bless you.